this is the thing, like, uh, if you're not seeing someone's humanity, like right now with all the Trump shenanigans and the way that Muslims are being scapegoated, when if your typical white person doesn't see the humanity of a Muslim, it's not just bad for that Muslim. It actually reflects on the humanity and conditions the humanity of the white person. Mm -hmm. So there's a kind of an, a bondage that happens whether you're the oppressed or the oppressor. And, and this gets complicated. You look at this from religious angle or psychological or sociopolitical, but there's all these layers. And at some level, there's a deconstructive task or a destructive even where you have to start peeling the layers away. And so within Jungian psychology, you can talk about how you have to deal with your own shadows, those parts of your own personality that you don't see or recognize that you always project onto other people. So when you see other people, you're just seeing kind of some fragment of yourself. Um, you can talk about it from another angle, like there's this whole psychological uh, area that's fascinating called infrahumanization studies. That's the way that we're conditioned to not see the humanity of others. So uh, we have all these narratives that we've absorbed about homeless people, for example, being lacking in competency and warmth. And so we are actually conditioned to not see their humanity whether we choose to or not. It's not, a, it's not about your intentions or your beliefs. It's about how you're conditioned to respond physiologically. So the study by Lasana Harris and Susan Fisk out of Princeton and Duke, where they showed images to these Princeton students and found that when, you know, if you see a human face, your medial prefrontal cortex lights up, right? But they were shown these faces of stereotypically homeless looking people and their medial prefrontal cortex did not light up. It's not because these are bastards uh, who made a decision, I don't think homeless people are humans. They're conditioned. We're all conditioned like that. Um, so there's a t tearing away of conditioning. Um, there's, you know, the stereotype of this, the Nordic or Germanic Scandinavian male in the upper Midwest, Minnesota here, uh, where can, men are conditioned not to feel their feelings. If you can't even feel your own feelings, how are you just supposed to experience the warmth of another person? There's all these layers. Some, How are you supposed to experience the warmth of yourself? Yeah, you can't. It's, and so there's all this stuff that like, you can't even, ex, you don't even know yourself. How can you start knowing another person? And so there are ways you can start tearing at that. But we all know, it doesn't matter how hardened that Scandinavian man is, if his elderly father is on his deathbed and he says, I love you, I'm proud of you, right? <laughs> then he might break down and cry. Yeah. So sometimes things pierce through. Sometimes it's just the right moment, the right place. You're in a fishing boat uh, and you see the sunset and a, and a Germanic Scandinavian male might cry and feel God. The spirit blows where the spirit will. Um, but we are aware of all these things that alienate us from ourselves and the land and God and other people. And they're all there. And there's all kinds of ways to study and explore that and tear it up. But at, we have to, at the end of the day, you don't study this stuff away. You don't read up on it and figure it out and undo the puzzle with your mind. You have to act differently, and then that reshapes your own conditioning. You can only recondition yourself through action. And it has to be action that's open, done with an open heart, which is what the Center for Prophetic Imagination is all about, is cutting through that through action, through art, through experience, through perception, not just by studying stuff. Mm -hmm.